Okay. 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 And the, the next order of business is the update from the polling companies. Um, this is, as you may recall, there was an initial um, article at town meeting that was withdrawn and uh, moving forward this, this uh, uh, project I am told has evolved to some other interesting possibilities and to avoid any um, lack of information um, Mr. Lapoli has asked to come before us and talk a little bit about some of the options that we may be, we may be exploring moving forward and I guess you have a little video as well. I do. I, I'd like Andrew. Yeah, can we? Can we can let's see Andrew, Andrew's Andrew. out there. Yeah. So I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, about the project before we go. Okay. Do okay. you want to play? Okay. Uh, actually, it's a nice atmosphere. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay with the board. It's okay yeah. with me. Yeah, why, why don't we just hold a second? I, I, just, I, 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 just want, I, want, um, I want Andrew to be in here. And I'm not sure where he went. I just saw him walk that way. So. It's probably a men's room break, which I didn't. several times over a lot of discussion because it's a really big project it's a big project because of the town of Andover asked for a large project this area is a really big site this whole area and they looked at this site as an opportunity to create economic value so once again this is a project that the town of Andover approached me on it was rezoned to do exactly what we're going to talk to you about today but what is different about my project than the buy right ability today that stands Today, by right, I can do everything there just about other than housing. And that was always a thing that I felt passionately about. I felt passionate about housing because as they build these projects today in the state of Massachusetts, you will see all of the larger projects having a housing component. Why? Because the retailers, the restaurants, some of these retailers that we're looking to bring into the town of Andover, they like to see the lights on after 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock. And typically, if you were to go to Minuteman Park, for example, you would see at 6 o'clock, there's not a lot of people over there. The lights are pretty much off on all those buildings. So it's really tough to incentivize or to entice restaurants, retail applicators to go in there. So that's where we came up with the idea of trying to create a housing component there. But we ran across some of the challenges or some of the ideas that we had there. We didn't realize until we went out in the community. So what I'd like to propose to you is a project very specific to what the community has thought of and some of the advice that they gave. When we looked at this particular project, we identified three clear problems. 
And it took us a while to do that, and there was a lot of team meetings. I can tell you specifically that I went in front of probably 20 or 25 meetings at local restaurants or establishments or even some public places that we heard a lot of feedback from the community. One of the first things we heard is the overcrowding this potentially could do to the Sanborn School. Because my idea was a mixed use of residential components that brought in millennials. And some of the people felt that with millennials, you might have children with children that would directly impact the Sanborn School. We heard that loud and clear. That's why we adjusted this particular project to studios and one bedrooms. And we felt passionate that that was gonna help solve what people felt would the potential overcrowding of the school be. But actually, we looked at it and we listened a little bit more, and today we'd like to come back and still talk about housing, but what is the real bigger need? And we're prepared to look at this project through a different lens. We're prepared to look at it as senior living, 55 and over, only. And that was one of the things we heard specifically at Sanborn School when I went down there. We heard, well, Sal, why don't you just make it all senior living, 55 and over? That is a big need in our community today. I have a big presence in downtown Andover. I need to make sure I want to be part of uh, facilitating the success of downtown Andover. As you know, we own Salvatore's. We also own the plaza itself. We are looking to partner with some other local owners with real estate downtown. We're excited about the town yard, and we one of the first petitioners to access the town yard or put a bid in uh, for the RFP process in town, in town yard. So we really feel comfortable with the premise that maybe eventually you could look at the Dascom Road project taking care of one of the needs in our town, which is senior living, and maybe that downtown town yard could look at more of the millennials walking traffic and things like that. Just an idea. The other thing we identified uh, is the abutters. Sal, we might believe you, potentially, of your reputation and your background as a developer, but we don't, we're not sure on those other parcels. Because if you remember what we were trying to accomplish at the town meeting was a creation of what was called ID3. Basically what it was was an overlay of the existing ID, ID2 to allow housing. But it just didn't allow 146 Daskin Road housing. It also allowed the other parcels that were there. So one of the concerns we heard loud and clear was, Sal, if we feel comfortable with your particular project, what's going to happen with the other three projects? How do we prevent those other three projects from following the same suit? And this ID3, this, this program that we put together, this Warren article, tried to address it, but it was a little clunky, it was a little clumsy. It was a little clumsy because people didn't really understand the difference. Right now, today, it is zoned to do all office, all retail, um, some manufacturing, um, by special permit, a hotel there. So the project itself, the only thing we were looking to add was the housing. And that's where it became confusing with the other parcels. And it was through a collaboration with uh, Andrew Flanagan. I want to thank you, uh, Andrew, for, for being uh, with some of your great ideas of what else we could do over there to kind of sift through this problem we had with the other abutters. There's a product out there that the state of Massachusetts is actually in your bylaws today. It's called a PUD, a Plan Unit Development. And a plan unit development is very specific to the project you're working on. And if you meet the right criteria and town meeting approves it, well, you can structure or create a particular project for a particular address. Now, there's some other nuances to it, and that's in the details, and we can continue to have that conversation and bring some people on board to better explain it. My hope and, and desire is to come in front of this board as much as the board will allow me to continue to give you updates of exactly what's going on and to keep people educated as to what we're doing. Once again, we're moving ahead with a project that is already zoned, that, you, that you've asked developers to come in and, and try to create. But the PUD will now be very specific to 146. In other words, if those other parcels want to do something along the lines of what we're doing, well, they have to go to town meeting and they have to do some heavy lifting just like we're trying to do. So a couple of the issues were A, the overcrowding of the schools with the millennials coming in. 55 and over, senior housing, hopefully that answers that question. Number two, what are you gonna do with the abutters? A PUD, this very new product that is on your books today, 
with, with, a, with a town meeting approval, much like we needed town meeting approval for the ID3, if we were able to get this PUD project, that would allow senior housing there. Once we got that, we're in great shape. Also, it restricts the other abutters. Let the other abutters come in front of the town and explain what they would do with their project. That would give the town an opportunity to say, we believe them or we don't. If they believe them, well then the project that they propose would move forward. The third and most important, and I want to talk about traffic. Right now, you have a double F project over there as far as traffic. It's a failed project. In the state of Massachusetts, correct me if I'm wrong, Rick, but I think you're in the top 75 intersections as far as uh, being the most dangerous intersections in the state. What we'd like to propose is taking that double F with two projects. A, we'd like to move on a parallel process starting right away with, by right, what we're allowed to do. We don't need any, we don't need to go to town meeting. We'd like to create a project in the square footage of approximately 700,000 square feet. We'd like to have a small grocery store over there, which you'll see in the video, and we certainly have some uh, pass outs over there. We'd also like to create offices, retail, and this hotel, boutique hotel component. Very much you have to understand that this is a boutique hotel, small, hotel, probably 100 to 125 keys. If we're able to do that, if we're not able to get the housing component, we're moving ahead on that by right. However, if we go to town meeting, the better of the two projects is a senior living housing project because retailers don't want those lights off at five o'clock at night time. So two projects moving on a parallel basis, one by right, the other one we're hoping that town meeting and Maybe the constituents of Andover will help weigh in on these monthly meetings we'll have or bi-weekly meetings we'll have in order to make this project better. I know you put together a task force. Maybe we could utilize some of the people on that task force to be able to report back to you that we've given input to Mr. Lapoli to make this project better. But the traffic is very much the way it is today is a failed intersection. Hopefully the town of uh, the state of Massachusetts with the Mass Works grant we'll talk a little bit about that, we'll improve this. If we were to do by right the project, the best that it can happen is a double D with the project in place. So it's an improvement to where it is, but not the best it can be. The absolute best it can be is with a housing component, which will take it to a double C. Now, it, it can't get any better than a double C no matter what. Why? Because of the pinch point of the, of the overpass. So the best it can ever be is a double C, which is the housing component. Housing component will bring less traffic than the double D by right project. I want that to be really, you know, really clear. I want you to understand, we looked at this project, we have a traffic report. We're like part of the members of the community, also as they come to our project, as I come in front of the, the selectmen working with Andrew, we'd like to hire, or pay for, I should say, pay for, just like if we were going through planning, we would have to pay for a peer review. The town of Andover creates an, uh, an RFP. They send it out to a, uh, to a third party consultant. The consultant works specifically for Andover. We as a developer have to pay that freight. We'd like the town of Andover to hire a consultant, a peer review of the traffic report that's already been completed, also of an economic report that will tell the town of Andover exactly what they're going to get for tax revenue. Now, there is some question going on of exactly what will the tax revenue be. We actually can't tell you specifically, but I can give you a really good idea. The number that I based it on at 3.8 million is probably on the low end, and I'll tell you why it's on the low end. We never factored in, or nor did the town take into consideration the underground, the underground garages. So based on the consultants we've already talked to, once again, a peer review that the town of Andover will hire that will vet that out in the existing process that you have today, whether you go through planning or zoning, that we would pay for, it would be at zero cost to the town, but they'd be able to come back and say, Mr. Lapoli's development is either on track and he's saying the right things, or there's some challenges. Of which case, we could have that discussion and try to figure out what the best solution was. So what we'd like to propose to you is two projects. One, by right, we're moving ahead 
and please understand, as I was approached by the town of Andover, it was said to me, listen, Sal, we rezone this because of exactly what's approved by now. We're looking to create a tax base over there. So we went ahead on that premise and did that. What we're trying to do and change the equation is add senior housing 55 and over. Very specific to that. So with this project is very different from the first time around. Even the, the process is very different. This is the first time of which we're having this conversation. We've talked about uh, the overcrowding in the schools, the abutters, the traffic. We talked a little bit about the town yard and how we see it as a complement to downtown. We're not detracting business away, we're complementing it because we're also still going to be able to provide with a PUD, and this is really, really interesting. With a PUD, you're allowed to create what's called a developer's agreement. You actually couldn't do that in an ID3. What is a developer's agreement? It's a contract between the town of Andover and the developer to provide other ancillary opportunities throughout the town to enhance the town of Andover. Sometimes people might say, well, that's a, a, a quid pro quo. Under an ID3, you can't do that. Under a PUD, you can. So if we want to get together and form a collaboration of creating fields somewhere or creating some presence downtown, a PUD, a developer's agreement, a legal document that is used today, that's what they do that for, to create other opportunities throughout the town. So we talked a little bit about a peer review. We talked a little bit about making these public meetings um, in the community. Uh, on our website, getting the word out, letting people understand, enticing people to come down. This project is moving forward based on the acquisition of that real estate. It's a really big piece of real estate. We're excited about it. We as a development company spent a lot of money based on what you've already approved prior to us. I want to make that. Nobody approved anything based on us. It was actually already approved through town meeting. I want to talk a little bit about the Mass Works grant. I know that's in question right now, what it's all about. I had a lengthy discussion with the Secretary of Economic Development for the state of Massachusetts this past week. He reiterated to me that the state of Massachusetts, based on that same size, scope, and volume, that the state of Massachusetts would still be there with this Mass Works grant to create the infrastructure. But one of the questions is, is well, how do you know what the infrastructure is going to cost? What happens if it's more money? Well, I'm here to tell you, if it's more money, just like the mitigation that the planning board would recommend, us as the developer would have to cover the, any of those expenses. So this is not something that is open-ended, where the town has a lot of exposure. All I want to say is, if it's something as a result of our development that the town of Andover needs to, to fix, and the grant doesn't cover it, we as the developers would cover any shortfall. We're prepared to do that. I've listened to the community, and we talked about it. You'll see in this very exciting video that I'd like to play for you exactly what this project looks like. And I want you to understand that a video like this, respectfully speaking, humbly speaking, I've never seen anything like this, but we wanted to put together a product that the town of Andover can start to embrace or understand what we're trying to accomplish. Um, this is strictly being seen for the first time in this kind of a form. We've never put it out there. We also have a package that we'd like to present after the video is shown that talks specifically about the project. But as far as the Mass Works grant, it's still alive. As you know, the Mass Works grant, and Senator uh, Barbara Italian is here to talk about that. It's kind of a year-to-year -year kind of uh, investment that the state makes. They allocate X amount of dollars, X amount of projects, they invest into it. Once they get a commitment from the town and the developer, then they proceed forward. So right now, we're still trying to meet that calendar year that the state is talking about, but also we'd like to do this. We understand that there's been a lot of confusion and frustration about this project. There's even been people within this room that said, listen, I'm hearing this for the first time the last time around, or they heard it for the first time at town meeting. That's not gonna happen this time. Last time, as a result of uh, some other challenges or decision-making, um, things were done in a, in a way that I think we can make it better this time. When I was at that town meeting, this is what I heard. Sal, give us a time to, uh, give us an opportunity to digest this, give us an opportunity to, to invest in and understand this project bring up this project, let people know about it, let people weigh on it, but be very transparent. And that's what you're gonna see starting right now. So with that, I'd like to show the video and I'd like to introduce the Lapoli family vision for 146 Daskin Road. 
as it reflects the town of Andover and keeping into the style and what the town of Andover expects for projects that are developed. We want to set the bar for other developers or other opportunities in your town. I think this project does it. Um, at least you'll see a project that will now we can have a discussion in which direction it should go. More of this, less of that, more green space. I want to also tell you what's not on this project that we're very, very passionate about is we're the leader, the leader, one of the biggest in the state of Massachusetts for green technology. Nobody has projects bigger than ours that are on private developments or residential components. You might find a public building with bigger solar panels than us, or you might have a, a, a developer that has equal you know, green energy uh, or green technology throughout this, but nobody will be bigger than us. Uh, we just installed one of the bigger solar panel systems in the entire state on a private enterprise. We anticipate doing that here. We want to set the bar when it comes to green technology. So what you don't see on this that I'm putting out there, and you just have to understand a little bit about Riverwalk, in the poorest city in the state of Massachusetts, we've invested millions and millions of dollars in green technology, and it's working out really well. You know, we have people that live there um, that have an electricity bill. Imagine the senior citizens um, or the people that are living in this 55 and over. The average electric electricity bill in my 250 market rate units in Andover, the average bill is less than $50 a week as a result of the green technology. I think that's really important. So with that, if we could play, uh, play the uh, video and welcome to 146 Daskin Road. Apologize for the sound. I, I, I would have. Uh, I, I didn't realize that you wouldn't be able to hear it, but uh, or you know, listen so intently. I'm sure there are people in the room that didn't get to hear it. But if we could just, Joe, and I don't know if you're able to do this, Joe, if you could just kind of put the last picture of the video up a little bit, maybe that might work for us. But what I think is important too is that I'd like to point out this picture and it kind of talks a little bit of it. industrial area as it sits today. Warehouses, as a matter of fact, you have some warehouses that'll be empty, that are, have been empty for quite a long time. Our building that we're occupying, uh, prior to owning it, it used to be manufacturing. It was empty and, and uh, closed for about 15 to 20 years. That They used to make Anderson windows there. That's been outsourced to other parts of the world today. 
So this particular project you see right here, you see two residential components. This is the 55 and over. You see an office building. On all the first floors of all these buildings, you'll see a retail component. These two offices, what we like, and we've had a lot of success in, if you look at the uh, Lowell Street project, uh, the medical office building one and two, that is completely occupied. Mass General Hospital just moved into it, having huge success over there. The project is very, very much um, being well received by the local community and by the Merrimack Valley as, as opposed to going into Boston, they're able to go to that location. We also have a desire by other hospitals that want to move into this area to provide that kind of a service. Also, you see in this building over here is this boutique hotel. I need you to do a couple of things. First of all, this was put together not as the project will sit. There's a lot of things, a lot of moving parts. And I'm going to point something out right away. You know, right here, it shows you're taking a left-hand turn, then a right into the project. Well, we all know that this project will back up, and this will be a four-way intersection. So there are still some working parts that we have to do. There are still some parts of this that we just want to bring to your attention. Everything that we're talking about today is not cast in stone, nor is it uh, verbatim or law that this is how much money we're going to bring in or this is what we're going to do. I think what's really important is this is the start of a discussion of what I'd like to do in your community as a developer. This is full transparency. I'm here to answer any questions. As far as the amount of money, once again, I'd like to reiterate, there was dialogue, well, that's not the right number, or this is the right number. I think this. I would like to create a placeholder. I'm placing a placeholder of $3.8 million to the town of Andover, net new revenue. If there are some expenses associated with it, the peer review of the economic report will vet mm -hmm. that out. If it's less than 3.8 million, it is what it is, and we can look at how to raise that. If it's more, the economic peer review report will substantiate that. So please keep in mind, everything that you see here is very fluid, flexible. It's not cast in stone, but this is a vision that we have for your town. And with that, I'll turn it over. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and members of the selecting body. Okay. I'd like to, at this point, Joe, if it's okay, I'd like, I'd like you to pass, I'd like to pass out a PowerPoint which speaks specifically to this project and some of the questions that I spoke about today. What we'd be looking to do, Mr. Chairman, members of the selectmen, what we'd like to try to accomplish is talk about uh, creating a warrant article uh, that we would come in front of you, hopefully sooner rather than later, as a result of the uh, urgency of the, the Mass Works grant. But please don't take that any further than the fact we as a developer would like to propose to garner the signatures that it would be needed in order to facilitate a town warrant article for the people of Andover to vote whether senior housing 55 is a benefit or not to this project. Once again, we spent a lot of money on this project, respectfully, humbly. We're moving forward on a project by right. This is the size and scope of the project we can do with approximately 700,000 square feet. We'd just like to tell you on a parallel basis, it's either going to be all office, much like Minuteman Park, with some retail components, maybe a boutique hotel as we described, or it's going to be this project, which will look identical. That's really important. This will be identical. If the housing component does not pass, those two buildings will be turned into office buildings. So it's a very easy transition. And the, um, the package uh, says that. And the board, any questions on the board? Yeah, Paul, I, Alex, I've got a question. Um, what does the, uh, uh, now what does your time frame look like? It sounds like with a PUD, uh, from what Andrew has communicated to us, that would still require a two-thirds vote at a town meeting, uh, and you're going to be supplying get the signatures, the petition. Are you going to be looking for a special town meeting in the fall, or Springtown meeting, or what, what's the time frame look like? Um, Mr. Vespola, Mr. Selectman, you're absolutely correct. Uh, this is the same requirement that we're asking for, whether it was ID3 or this PUD. Although you still have it on your books, you require, and when I say on your books, it's part of your bylaws, you talk about a PUD, a plan unit development. But we're going to be uh, garnering the 200 signatures. We'd like to move forward sooner rather than later. Uh, Selectman Vespoli, uh, so we will be presenting something, hopefully maybe in the fall, I understand there might be a desire or a need to go 
have a fall meeting as a result of the, um, I think it's North Andover water or something to do with the water rates. So maybe that could be in conjunction with that. To answer your question specifically, we will move forward to get the signatures to try to do something sooner rather than later. It might not be the fall. It might get pushed out a little later than the fall, but hopefully before Thanksgiving, sir. Okay. And my second question is more towards Andrew. Andrew, in light of this uh, PUV reformatting, which looks like it's very, very specific to the site versus the two zoning districts, um, the proposed task force that was discussed uh, a few meetings ago, would it make sense to relook at the charter for that um, task force and focus it on more of a peer review of this project? I, I think that's uh, the most logical next step. So what I would propose is that um, I modify uh, what was presented to this board and uh, send it out for feedback, uh, certainly prior to our next meeting. Thank you. So, so just a clarification, Sal. So, um, moving, so what I think I heard you say is, or what I heard you say is, please clarify, moving forward with an all commercial development which is a by right development that you can do today, will have a greater traffic impact than a combination commercial residential um, project. Slugman Kowalski, that's a, absolutely the right way to phrase that. Your project as it sits today, your intersection as it sits today is a double F on the top in the state as far as failed intersections. With the project in place, with the $6 million grant, with any shortfall that the Lopoli companies have to follow through on, we can improve that with an all commercial Minuteman style park to a double D with the project, which is an improvement, but not the best it could be. The best it could ever be, uh, Selectman Kowalski, is a double C. The reason is that pinch point of the bridge, you would have to dismantle I-93 bridge in order to to widen that, that's never going to happen. But we can improve that with a senior housing component to the best it can be, which is a double C, sir. I think that just to follow up on your question, is I think what you're proposing this time is that the traffic study will be done and a peer review of it that you will pay, or pay for. So I, as, I, as I think I understood you, we would be able to hire a, an independent consultant, independent of you, and we, and you would pay the bill for that. So that so that the traffic, we would be able to see the traffic from a full commercial development as a, and a uh, residential component and be able to compare them? Is that what you're saying? Uh, Mr. Chairman, the answer is absolutely yes. First of all, just to let you know, a traffic report was done. We spent thousands, we spent a lot of money on a traffic report. It's already done. So we're not just up here creating some <coughs> opinions. The data will show from one of the largest and most qualified engineering reports out there that, that create this traffic program. We'll be able to show you why it's a double D with all commercial and why it will be a double C. Well, and but then at that point, though, you, we, that will be peer review. Yeah, yes, you do that now, review. sir. See, right now, I know and, and I apologize, sir. Right now, if we were to go in front of the planning board, they would say, okay, we're going to send this out to a peer review. So no matter what we make an opinion, you today have the tools in place that you send that out. The developer or the applicant pays for it, and you are able to get unbiased feedback. So the answer is yes. The only difference is on this one, sir, we'd like to also incorporate and validate <coughs> an economic report that is also peer review that we would pay for. I, I, I think that we also, and Tom, correct me if I'm wrong, but the Board of Selectmen can also require that now. Am I right? Require a peer review and so on. Uh, yeah, under, <coughs> under the rules that were uh, promulgated pursuant to the change uh, to state law last year, uh, you can require if they're coming in front of you for some kind of permit. You can you can require them to get a peer review if there's some kind of permit. I hadn't thought about this first time hearing about right. this, but it's possible that they could give you a gift. That's exactly right. right. For, um, for, for a specific purpose. You well, could accept it for a specific purpose. The reason I asked was I would like to um, empower the committee. 
we appoint to be able to do that, and without being able, without having a mechanism, I, 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 that would be. Well, if they're, if they're going in front of the, and I don't know what the schedule is here, but if they're going in front of the planning board, <coughs> there'll be a requirement. In Bam, yeah, of course, part. of course. But I just want I want to, I want this commission or committee that we put together to have all the power it needs to validate and compare. I think the, the, the best thing is to compare the traffic and the economic studies. Well, we are presenting two projects, so I'd like to I'd like to look at them both and say what's best for the town. And I think the townspeople, and you've used the word transparency several times, and I and, and that's what we need is to have a full review and a peer review, an independent peer review of both of those, so that we can compare the two developments and see what's best. We'd, for we'd be offering a gift to the town of Andover to cover any expenses, but we'd like the town of Andover to help facilitate a peer review, hire their own consultants in order to validate the information that we're giving. Perfect. Uh, Paul? Yes? Alan? Yes, sorry. Sorry, Laura. Um, no, that's okay. another question. Uh, another question for Andrew. The state's been um, silent on since they made that uh, uh, press release and the, the appearance about the MassWorks grant. And uh, I know, Andrew, the last time we had spoken, you hadn't heard anything from them, any kind of feedback. And I was wondering, you know, just they, they made a big, you know, big splash about it and all, and we haven't heard anything since town meeting. Do we know? Um, where, where the state stands on this? So uh, this I don't, commitment. I certainly don't have, uh, or have not received a letter of intent um, from the Secretary's office, but it's our understanding that the grant um, as presented is still on the table um, providing uh, the parcel 146 task and moves forward in one direction or the other. I'd and like to, uh, you're absolutely right, Mr. Pispoli. I had a lengthy discussion with the Secretary of State about the uh, new vision that the Lapoli Company uh, is putting forth and he is still behind this project and he is willing to at the appropriate time to be able to make a, a statement or it'll come from his office that the state of Massachusetts is still behind this project. It's really hard for the state of Massachusetts to make a public uh, announcement on a project that when he asked me what I'm going to have, I still don't know what direction of the project is. It's either going to be X or it's going to be Y. So when he said to me, Sal, when you know the direction you're going to go, understand that we'll be there to support you but first go through the process in the town if anybody wants to reach out for us we can create like we did prior to that uh, Andrew was able to speak to the secretary prior to the announcement but to answer the question specifically the state of Massachusetts is still behind this project but the state of Massachusetts will inform you uh, and let you know specifically once we've made a decision in the direction we're going of what they're doing and their commitment. So as of right now, the answer is yes, but more information to follow, and that'll be part of the peer review process. That'll be part of the, the task force and or any other people in this room to vet that out, sir. Yeah, it just wasn't clear. It didn't appear there were any contingencies when, when Secretary Ash came out to make that uh, that announcement that there was you know, there was contingencies. It was you know, a award, if you will, to the town for the traffic and the uh, and the sewer extension. So, um, you know, it seems it just seems a, a little bit odd that they are. It almost seems like they're hedging a bit. And um, as you said, you're going to go forward with a with a, a construction project either way, whether it's housing or not. Um, so I'm just just surprised that the head the state would hedge on you know, on this MassWorks grant. Well, just to let you know, Alex, and this is full disclosure, without a project of this magnitude, there is no MassWorks grant. That's very specific. That is very well documented. Um, if we don't go over there and spend what will amount to potentially a quarter of a billion dollars, the state of Massachusetts isn't coming up with anything. If the project was to stay the way it is, why should the state of Massachusetts invest into that area if it's not going to create any kind of return on their investment? MassWorks grants are not given to a town as a result of good faith. We like what you're doing. They're given project specific. What economic payback does the state of Massachusetts get as a result of their investment? So, perfectly honest, if a project does not go there, there is no MassWorks grant. That's been very much uh, the point from the very beginning. However, more information to come. 
and uh, hopefully Andrew and the secretary can have a conversation once we start to dial in what this project looks like, sir. What we can't move yeah, forward. I, I, yeah, no, I, I understand that. I would look what, what I would look to be looking for from from uh, from the secretary Ash's office is if there's two components, there's two. It looks like there's two two uh, two directions here. One is with housing, one's without housing. And I'd like to know, and I think I think that the citizens would like to know too, especially since this is all going to be up to them as far as a vote, um, to know what if there's a difference uh, with the Mass Works grant. If you know, if holy companies are going to build a commercial space only, and I'm not going to advocate for either one with this question, but if it's just going to be commercial, what's the commitment from the Mass Works grant? And if the uh, decision is to go ahead with the uh, residential and commercial, what is the uh, commitment from uh, the Mass Works grant? That, that's, that, that, that's about as simple as I can ask that question. I think that's a reasonable uh, question to ask. The answer that you will get back is, will be very consistent with the message. If the project changes and it's decreased in the sheer size of it, then the state of Massachusetts will look at their return on investment and recalculate the amount given. Right now, both projects, either by right, all commercial, retail, uh, is the same size as what it would be if it had a housing component. Therefore, as of today, as of the words from the secretary, the grant will not change because the project in square footage is roughly the same. So it would be probably safe to assume that if the project, if the grant was reduced, and the project was reduced, I'll, I'll put it the other way around, the project was reduced and the grant was subsequently reduced because of the reduction in size, there might also be a reduction in the need for mitigation because of the smaller. Yeah. yeah. Right, right, but if it's the same, not could, that it's square footage, it's the same square footage. No, if it, um, no that's what I was saying, is if it did come yeah. down in square footage, then there would be, there might be a need for less mitigation. Right. So, uh, Alex, I, I would think, think what's important is this. Alex? I think it's fair, Andrew, if we could get, um, you know, I, I'd rather not assume anything either way. I think we've got enough time to we can get some clarity from Secretary Ash on that question. I also want to put out there, earlier in the presentation, Alex, I said whatever the state doesn't pick up, the developer will pick up for any mitigation that is needed out there. So I get it six million bucks and maybe we, you know, maybe the project changes and it's five million, but you still need six million dollars of infrastructure. Whatever is needed there that the state of Massachusetts does not pick up, the developer will pick up in order for the success of this project to take place. So with that, if the state of Massachusetts decided no, and we still are able to put housing, we will have to find a way to put up six million dollars in mitigation to solve those problems that the town has. So no matter what, it will be mitigated either through a partnership with the state or the developer's own ability. Okay. Those will be planning board requirements anyway, so that, because they they would require any mitigation. That's where grant is nice, it solves a lot of problems. No it budget. supports the town, they don't have to put up the two million dollars, they're about some number for sewer extension that sooner or later you have to do. We get that. But guess what? If we're able to move forward on this project, we as a developer will guarantee whatever has to get done will get done, or we won't be able to open and won't be permitted. Yeah, the mortgage permits. But so, Alex, your request, I'm certainly happy to uh, have a follow-up with uh, Secretary Ash. Thanks, Andrew. So if the, if the grant is $6 million and $6.8 million is required, then that's going to be... That's gonna developer be will have to cover the shortfall. Right. All right, my question was going to be about the sewer, which you just alluded to. That was one of the That, that, that's one of the best questions I've heard asked about this particular project. Right now you have a serious problem, you have a capacity problem, because right now all the buildings in that area, Hewlett Packard, California Paints, uh, Restaurant Depot, the former Mayo Clinic building, and some other buildings that are around the corner on 93, their sewer goes through Tewksbury. Tewksbury charges exorbitant rates in order to do that. They're taking their capacity back. As a matter of fact, I provided a letter to the town 
uh, of Andover, uh, the town of Andover, have had lengthy discussions with <coughs> the manager of, of Tewksbury, which is eventually, guys, we're taking our capacity back because we're reaching our limit. So we need it for our own developments. We're not going to give it to the town of Andover. That means sooner or later, the town of Andover has to bring sewer down there in order for those buildings, besides my project, to continue to operate. It's approximately a couple of million dollars. Is it less? Is it more? Um, Selectman Gregory, I'm not really sure. All I can tell you is this. The $6 million grant incorporated that $2 million placeholder. I need to bring sewer down for my project to exist. We can't send the capacity to Tewksbury. They won't allow it. So therefore, no matter what, the Lapoli Companies is going to be going to be responsible for this sewer extension. We'd like to partner with the state of Massachusetts on it. It's really, humbly, respectfully speaking, it's really a town <coughs> issue. How are you going to solve me as a taxpayer that I want to build it out there right now in a few years when Tewksbury takes that back? How are you going to solve my problem? So, and, and the rest of the other buildings, but this grant addresses that specifically. Thank you so much. That was very, very informative. I'm look, I will we'll look forward to um, to uh, updates regularly, um, and we'll we'll get to work and, and speak to Secretary Ash. Maybe answer a few of those questions, and, and we'll go from there. We have a PowerPoint. We also have some extra copies. We'd be happy to give them to some of the people that are here today. We only brought 20 in. I didn't anticipate such a large crowd, and I appreciate that. But very shortly, we'll have a website set up. It's not in operation right now, but I'm being told we're working on it. And that PowerPoint that you saw tonight, the video and the PowerPoint will be on the website. Please bear with me. I apologize. But this is the very first time anybody has seen the PowerPoint. It's the very first time anybody's seen the video. We're working as fast as we can to get that information to you, but it will be sooner rather than later. Let, let me take a couple of minutes. I didn't really get public comment. I didn't see any hands at first, but now I'm seeing a few hands. So, yes. Oh. yes I was wondering. Ma'am, you got to tell us who you are first. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Thank Janet you. Clark. Yeah, I live on Church Hill Road Thank in Neighborview. Um, I was wondering what, uh, how you're envisioning the senior housing. Will it be condos or will it be rentals? It'll be rentals, ma'am, and there'll be an affordability component for the seniors. We didn't have that the first time around because we wanted all market rate. I think the town of Andover has done their fair share for affordable units in the town. I think they've surpassed what they were supposed to do. However, I think when you talk about senior housing, there should be an affordable component. So with that, there'll be rental units, no condos at this point. I never envisioned any of that being condos over there. So there'll be apartments and there'll be an affordability component. Yep. Yes. Steve Ostoskis, Blanchard Street. Um, sounds like there's there's a possibility this may go to town meeting under a 200 signature provision. There may also be a fall town meeting related to the North Andover thing. So there's a probability. North Reading. Uh, North Reading. Excuse me. I keep saying Angor North Andover. Actually, Center. they they even made that mistake. So, <laughs> um, so there's probability. There's some probability that there may be a fall town meeting associated, and this project may come up. But we also heard the need to true up, or the desire to true up, the two studies, the traffic study and the economic study. Um, how, what can be done to make sure we have a town meeting that's fully informed, assuming we go to town meeting? What can be done to make sure that those studies are, I understand they're complete, but that they're trued up, that the town is comfortable with them, that all the peer I can assure done. you we're going to do this right, not fast. When it's right, we'll do it. We'll try to do it as fast as possible, but it's got to be right because I agree with you 150% that we need to, I think one of the things that was missing last time was not only were there numbers out there, but there should have been independent verification of some of those numbers. And now we, we have that opportunity, and when we get that, it's when we start to feel uh, that we can you know, move forward with it. So. And, and agreeing with right is better than fast, but also understanding that under a 200 signature provision, I think I'm not familiar with that every detail that state law that, they, that can drive it um, that can drive the timing uh, that this is right. heard so uh, I understood there was some discussion about possibly having the committee do an RFP and select somebody I'm wondering if there, if there are more expeditious ways to do that the purchasing office and then handing that off 
So I, I think they are, Steve. Thank you. To your point, that we can expedite the process. We'll certainly move as quickly as we can. That's I, of course, it is. Yes, sir. Um, I've not seen you anything. You have to tell us who you are. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Ken Benedictus. Thank you, Ken. Surrey Lane. Uh, I've not seen anything in this proposal, nor did I see anything in the prior proposal that addressed the issue that you began talking about initially. And that is that uh, the intersection from 93 and Dascom Road is one of the worst seven, amongst the worst 75 in the state. What is your proposal to go before the Department of Transportation and seek their input and their assessment on that horrific intersection? Because all I see at this point is the addition of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of additional vehicles with no effort other than a couple of traffic lights to correct both north and south flowing traffic. I'd like to have my traffic engineer talk a little bit about that with the engineer, but Ken, that's a very good point. That's why we started today with an initial transparent conversation. This is the first time you've ever seen this, Ken. But to answer your question specifically, um, not in the detail that Rick or this report will show, sir, all I will tell you is this. Every intersection of where the highway is will be wide. Coming off the ramp, it'll be wide. So it's not just a few lights, sir. All the roads coming off the highway, coming onto the highway, they'll all be almost doubled as far as capacity, widened. So there's, a, there's much more than just a few traffic lights. However, great question. Rick will talk a little bit about it, but more information to come. We still have to go in front of the state, and Rick, maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Sure. Yep. Uh, good evening, Rick Freiberg from TEC, the civil engineer for the project. Uh, so you're exactly right. There's a lot more that goes in with than just tinkering with lights and putting in a new traffic signal. Um, there's six million dollars investment that goes with, so it is more than just a couple of lights. Um, so you know, what's important again is that not only will the traffic um, be vetted through the peer review process, but part of the traffic study has two parts. But one is how much traffic is being generated by what you're proposing. The second part of it addresses mitigation. So what are you doing about that extra traffic? Uh, how does your design accommodate and prepare the problems that are out there today? That's, that's part two of the traffic study. And again, that would be part two of what is going to be verified by the Township Viewer. So we would put forth a proposal that outlines the amount of traffic that we feel will be generated. They'll review that. Once they come to terms or once we agree on the numbers that are going to be generated, the second phase of that is to move into mitigation. And during the mitigation phase, again, the review proposal that we put forward uh, and confirm that that occurred or not. Aside from whatever the town band over does, if you, you correctly point out, these roads, uh, especially these ones right here, uh, the, to the ramps here, Daskam Road until the point about right here or so, and then all the way back to the 93 northbound offer, it's owned by the state of Massachusetts, uh, Massachusetts DOT. So, so aside from what we have to do locally, there's also about a year long Mass DOT permitting process that goes with that, and they will also be reviewing the so is your intention to bring to the community the results of the Department of Transportation's assessment prior to requesting any support from town meeting? I, I think what I'd like to do is that, I mean, what we've talked about tonight is review by an independent engineer. Mass DOT will obviously weigh in on that. I don't think that Mass DOT would sign off on a, on a permit without a full 100% design plan, which is document that's hundreds and hundreds of pages of site plans, but I think we could get them to review the improvements that are laid out in the traffic report and provide uh, their assessment of those improvements. Yes. My concern is a real one in that I don't believe that any uh, local engineering work is going to resolve the issue of the 93 interchange. That's going to require massive construction in order to deal with what potentially will be coming north and south. I'm afraid that we're looking at interchanges, not just traffic lights. And I think we need to be looking at that because that could involve uh, destroying the quality of life for the people in the area uh, and could also in involve uh, uh, creating uh, additional problems that uh, can only be corrected through massive engineering intervention. So I, I would like for your company to consult with the Department of Transportation, get their input on, on the awful situation that's a double F at that intersection, and see what their recommendation is concerning mitigation. No problem at all, 100% agree to do that. 
prior to town meeting approval. Yes, sir. You won't have the time. <laughs> so again, what we're proposing is getting getting information in front of Mass DOT, showing them what our plan is for mitigation, walking them through the improvements that we have in mind, and soliciting their feedback. So you said it was going to take about a year for a full permit. And you need a full permit in order to have that project go on the way. In order to construct the project. Yes. But but not in order to understand what the improvements need to be. Well, that's incomplete as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I, I disagree, but what I'd like to do if I can, just to kind of get back on topic, is again defer to the town is going to hire an independent consultant who is well versed in this stuff to look at it and they'll, and they'll provide their recommendations uh, independent of whatever it is that we provide. Okay, one final question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is just a question to, to the board. Um, I have several friends who live in the Gascon area. This is Gascon board, about the area. They have expressed a lot of concern about the traffic because right now, about 4.30, 5 o'clock, traffic is pretty awful. And now you add the shopping of about 2,000, 3,000 people. Would you consider, when you do, the, when you set up the review, that uh, Mr. Lufoni was talking, you're going to have a parallel review, uh, you're going to hire consultants. Would you consider including a couple of people from the Gascom Road and adjoining streets so that they will be able to give that inputs? The commission we're going to put together will have citizen, um, citizen uh, involvement and representation on that. So, yes, they will be able to interact with the with the uh, traffic consultants. Would you explicitly reserve at least one of those? I think there's two already, correct? Mm -hmm. From the Jasper Road area? Yes. I, I think there should be more, Mr. Selectman. Well, maybe. I'm going to, as the developer, I'm going to ask the abutters, um, and if I have to hold it in a gymnasium, I will, uh, but I'm going to get as much feedback as I can from the local community whether it's Surrey Lane or whether it's across the street from Surrey Lane or further down, uh, we're going to get a lot of input and we're going to explain the project and we're going to have an opportunity for the people, the abutters, to ask questions to the independent consultants of whether this project is viable or not, sir. So yes, sir, I, I can yeah, promise that, sir. Just another point about the, the committee, the commission. Um, it's a public body, so any meetings that that body has would be open to the public as well. They'd be posted. posted they'd be meetings. posted meetings that would be in a forum that the public is open to attend. So, so the company, the, the town will hire a company to do that, and the company will independently do the analysis, come and present it in a public forum. Is that what you're saying? That's correct. correct. That's correct. Yep. But so that that team that develops that will not include any input. Yes, I've got two friends who live there and they're very concerned. Yeah, no, they will, of course. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, it, it, right from the start, we want to make sure that that was well represented. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thomas. Oh, I'm sorry. Janet Clark again. Go hiding. Um, is there a task force being uh, formed or have, has it been formed? Yeah, we, we sort of delayed it because we knew, finalizing it, because we knew there was an update coming there was something so we kind of wanted to look at what the next step would be here so now that now we will start to put together we'll fast track that so as I said we're gonna uh, modify the scope in charge yep. of the um, committee and then it's my anticipation based on prior votes of the board to populate it for the end of the good
Um, I, you know, it's not uncommon. I monitor for all the communities that I have. This is new for Andover, but I monitor a number of MassWorks grants projects in Breakit, in Tewksbury, and in Lawrence. Uh, so it's not uncommon, you know, that um, there was mention made of, you know, what if there isn't enough money in the, uh, the grant to cover, or if some unforeseen issue comes up which requires more money. It's also not uncommon to make a request to add on to a grant. So bear in mind, you were talking about scaling it down, but there are also opportunities sometimes when mitigating factors present themselves to actually go in and receive additional money. So at this point, I would say that uh, certainly the town manager and myself and the, you know, the, my colleagues that represent you know, uh, state government um, are in contact with Jay. Um, I think he's he understands that we need to come to consensus here, uh, that we need to do that. He sees the value for those who showed up when he came and unveiled that proposal. He did mention, although he's willing to look at both, both options, he did mention that the future is going to be mixed use with a residential component. And he mentioned in great detail at that unveiling of the grant back in April the fact that places like the Burlington Mall and others at some point or large uh, office spaces that do not have that mixed component, um, it's going to be a real challenge for them to stay viable as we enter a 21st century economy. And, um, you know, he was really welcoming our forward thinking in his remarks when he came that day on behalf of the state for looking at mixed development, mixed use, adding in residential, uh, making sure that, you know, we're able to remain vibrant. So I will continue to monitor this as well. Uh, there's been no discussion at all about pulling this, but we have to be mindful of the fact that there are other communities. It is a competitive process. So we need to come to some consensus and move forward. So we're going to there. Thank you. Okay, quickly, we're okay. One last question. Yep. Uh, <coughs> uh, we didn't talk at all about parking. Did, you, did your consultant make an assessment at the what the parking spaces would be required to, to live with existing town zoning regulations? Yes, sir, and that, that is part of the, the so uh, you, transparency. You'll be able to see that in the report, sir. Okay. That's very much controlled by planning. planning. Again, thank you very much. We thank look forward much. to updates, regular updates, and we'll uh, thank you. see you then. Thank you.